Jamestown, the first successful English colony in North America, was established on May 14th near present-day Williamsburg, Virginia. King James I chartered the Virginia Company to colonize the Atlantic coast of North America between what is now New York and North Carolina. At the time, the Spanish ruled Florida. The English colonists, who called everything north of Florida Virginia for their Virgin Queen Elizabeth I, hoped to find gold deposits and a river route to the Pacific Ocean to lower the costs of trade with Asia. Meanwhile, the company's investors also hoped colonizing North America would alleviate population strains in England by encouraging the poor to immigrate to Virginia where they could harvest raw materials such as timber, corn, and precious metals to be sent back to England while purchasing English manufactured goods. Jamestown's initial group of 105 colonists were led by a weak seven-man governing council and settled on a humid and marshy peninsula in the James River. The swampy climate proved detrimental to their health, but the land and location had many benefits. The area was surrounded by water deep enough to dock ships for trade. Moreover, the area was uninhabited by Native Americans, but it was connected to the mainland by a thin strip of land, which greatly aided in its defense. Even with their strong defensive position, lack of food, the spread of disease, and war with American Indians nearly finished Jamestown. Because the colonists focused on finding gold and silver, they neither hunted nor farmed, instead trying to survive on the supplies they brought and bartering with the Native Americans. Soon, lack of food sparked conflict within the settlement and with local tribes. In 1608, the colony's president, John Smith, instituted a policy forcing colonists to produce food or starve. This succeeded, but even without the threat of starvation, colonists died from infected water, mosquito-borne, and old world diseases. Moreover, struggles over food continued. Though the local Sanakamoko tribe agreed to barter for provisions, the colonists had arrived during a drought, and sometimes raided native food stores. In the fall of 1609, Powhatan, grape chief of the 30 Sanakamoko tribes, cut trade with the colonists, hoping to starve them into leaving. The colonists and the Tanakamoko tribes spent the next five years fighting the first Anglo-Powhatan War. In 1613, Samuel Argall took Powhatan's daughter, Pocahontas, hostage. During that time, she converted to Christianity and married tobacco farmer John Rolfe in 1614, easing tensions and effectively ending the war. Tobacco stabilized Jamestown's economy but growing it for profit required cheap labor, leading the colonists to import enslaved Africans. John Rolfe developed a strain of tobacco that succeeded wildly in Europe, making tobacco the New World's first cash crop, a crop cultivated only for sale. By 1619, tobacco's profitability ensured Jamestown's survival, and the Virginia Company began importing indentured servants, people from England who worked for room and board for a specific period of time. The Virginia Company paid for impoverished English citizens to travel to the New World on the condition that they fulfilled a multi-year work contract. When their service ended, servants were usually given a parcel of land, some food, and a weapon. In August 1619, colonists purchased 20 African slaves from an English warship to work in the tobacco fields. Historians believe that these first Africans were treated like indentured servants and were eventually given their freedom. In time, the colonies made laws favoring chattel slavery, the practice of buying, trading, and selling people for lifelong servitude. And by the mid 17th century, it had all but replaced indentured servitude. In addition to farming tobacco, the colonies' development of a legislative government assured its permanence and self-sufficiency. Early on, Jamestown lacked strong leadership besides John Smith. This changed in May 1611, when Sir Thomas Dale became the colony's acting governor. Faced with an idle, undisciplined population, Dale instituted the first English language laws in the Western Hemisphere. The laws divine, moral, and martial set codes of conduct and established martial law, or the enforcement of law by armed forces. 
Rooted in biblical and English common law, the law severely punished blasphemy, laziness, murder, and violence towards friendly Indians. As Virginia grew, so did its political system. The Virginia Assembly became the colony's first legislature in 1619 and America's first democratically elected body. The Virginia Assembly comprised the governor, an upper house, and a lower house, with 20 members elected from the surrounding settlements. This form of government was representative, but not entirely democratic. The Virginia Company controlled upper house membership, and it, as well as the governor, could veto legislation. Meanwhile, the voting public, limited to male landowners, elected members to the lower house. While government helped secure the growing colony, the arrival of women encouraged social stability. Until the first two women, Mistress Forrest and her maid, Ann Burris, arrived in 1608, the colony was purely a business venture. Ann Burris was the first unmarried English woman to arrive in the New World. Her Christian marriage to colonist John Layden was another first in the colonies. Their daughter, Virginia, was Jamestown's first child, and their family thrived despite the colony's high death toll. Over the next few years, more women trickled in as indentured servants and moneyed property owners. Although the colony's leaders envisioned Jamestown as a traditional patriarchal society, a social system in which men headed the household, there was too much work to be done, and women worked in the fields alongside free men and servants. By 1619, the Virginia colony was an apparent success. To ensure that it would remain self-sustaining, the Virginia Company recruited 90 suitable women to make the voyage to North America to become wives. They would care for the home in common areas and bear and raise children. Their presence would keep men in the colonies, elevate the status and authority of those men, and build the patriarchal society Jamestown's founders desired. 